Hello and welcome to a fun game from the recent title Tuesday on Chess.com where we have the Canadian Grandmaster Razvan Protu playing as white against the one of the top female uh, Armenian players, Anna Sarkisyan. The game started with an Italian game with c3, knight f6, d4, ed4, which actually transposes to a line I recommend in Crush Sub 800 e4 in my new course, where I recommend the Scotch Gambit move order with d4, ed4, bishop c4, and after bishop c5, c3, knight f6, we indeed transpose back to the game. So white continues with e5, and if you're playing players below 1800, most of them are not going to know that the best move for black is c5. But of course, you know, these are title players, so d5 was played. Bishop b5, knight e4. And now for cd4, most of the time at a high level, people go bishop b6 and try to keep the attack on the d4 pawn, which of course I do cover in my course. But bishop to b4 is a move that was played in the game, and perhaps one you'll place more often at lower levels. Bishop d2. White is quite happy for black to grab the bishop pair advantage, as it happened in the game, as white does accelerate their development in the process, and also we don't have to worry about the annoying knight on e4 anymore. Now, after what happens in the game, you might think that maybe it's better for black to go knight e7 and to avoid the double pawns that arise, though I do still think that white would be better in this position, like a3, bishop d3, and you do have good chances to attack on the king side. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, do make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, all that good stuff. Up to castles, bishop g4. You could make an argument for flicking an h3 just so that black's not able to retreat the bishop along this diagonal later, but white decides to take the knight, where b takes c6, queen c2, attacking this pawn. And we can see here also that black's structure is very weak. You know, black is sacrificing a pawn, trying to get some sort of play. It shouldn't really be enough, but I do still like the way white played it, where rather than grabbing black's weak pawn, white decides to build the straight jacket with a3. If they take the knight, we're just going to take back with our knights, avoiding the double pawns and giving us a good knight versus bad bishop position, and our structure is clearly a lot more flexible on both sides of the board. Not to mention all these lines, we do keep our nice base advantage. So after bishop e7, white decides to clamp down with the move b4, just asking his pawn how it's going to get away. Black goes to a very passive defense with bishop d7. And yet at this point, we can say the position is already strategically winning for white, as we have a beautiful outpost for the knight. The bishops are kind of stuck, and black doesn't really have a good pawn break. You know, a5 is also covered. Black seeks counterplay in a game with f6, and rather than taking and help black's piece get more active with the recapture, white just plays rook e1 waiting for black to take, and then getting the knight to a very beautiful outpost on e5. Where you can see it also shuts out both the black bishops. Uh, if I was white, I'd be tempted just to go knight a5 and just gang up on that c6 pawn. But white decides to play more for domination with knight c5, and you know we see here that the knight is absolute monsters. Knight c6 is a threat. And if you play rook b6 trying to defend it, that's a very passive square for the rook, and it's pretty easy. First, increase the pressure on the weak pawn of our pieces. Not to mention, we do have ideas of potentially you know, pushing our own majority forward or playing with the pieces on the king side. Like you'll often see these rook lips come into play, trying to attack the black king in these lines. So, black goes queen h4, tries to make things a bit more complex. And, well, saying that, okay, you can't take c6 because then h2 is on pre. Um, you could play g3, kicking the queen away and then taking the pawn, but. It being a blitz game, white decides he doesn't want to weaken his king if he can help it. And so he plays f4, trying to keep a bit more control. It's not the most precise move, but okay, it's a blitz game at the end of the day. There are going to be mistakes. But it's true, black could potentially, you know, take on c5, using the fact that we can't take back with pieces we would like to. And that at least makes the c6 pawn a bit less weak when you can't put a rook here just to attack and win it down the half-open file. But instead of this, rook b8 was played... And white did a pretty good job at shutting down black's counterplay after queen h6. A fun little move by white here in the move knight e to d7, which, okay, it's probably actually a mistake in this position. You probably would be better off bringing the other knight to d7 if you had to choose, just so that their knight doesn't have a square and you kind of force them to take and, you know, trade off their better bishop and leave them with the dud bishop on, uh, on d6. Um, and also, you know, if they do take, I mean, strategically... Black's king is so weak here after 95, and the position is just so bad that it is going to be technically winning for white. Our king is pretty safe as it is. 
Black has 90 d7 and black takes takes. And at this point, again, maybe the best chance is to play bishop takes and accept your position is bad, but maybe not dead just yet. After rook d8, white's not able to re-establish this grip with the knights, and it's a common theme you see in this variation where the knights just outpace the bishops. The game turn rook f8, white played queen c1, going to take back on c5 with a piece. Strategically, it makes some sense. Black goes bishop h3, and okay, this is trying to you know, somehow get the queen into mate on g2. Easier said than done. Again, I kind of like the idea of trying to keep control as white, like knight d3, just go up and c6 pawn. Because when c6 falls, you're also getting d5 as well, most likely. But white goes and takes the pawn, which actually gets kind of messy now. This way the game really spices up. And for example, if black plays g5, just forcing open that f file and weakening the king, it's definitely a position where all three results are possible. So white did lose control a little bit here. Again, in blitz, that's often what happens. The game goes a bit crazy. Bishop f4 with what black tried instead, hoping that white will foolishly take and, you know, allow, for example, queen g6 or indeed even a, well, I was going to say meant to take queen c6, but yeah, queen g6 is, is also quite appealing. We see certainly that the white king is very exposed and the, the tables have kind of turned. So it isn't black's idea, but white did a lot better and threw in the move 97 first and only then took the bishop so that there's no queen g6 or queen takes c6. Again, the power of those intermediate moves. After rook f4, white again found the only move here to win, and not only that, the only move not to be worse even, where uh, the key move, and you might want to type in a comment below what move you think it is before, uh, before I reveal the answer. Uh, so in this case, the move knight f5 is the key. And if they take our knight, we go rook e8 and back rank mate, which is in fact what happened in the game, and black resigned here. But if you play say queen to g5 or queen g6 instead. I mean, if there's any check on the g5, we go knight g3, and we are going to be a piece up. We're still threatening mate. We can go knight e6 and trade off some pieces, something like this would be a good example. You know, white is up a piece and black is not main the white king, so white will win here in any case. Uh, but yeah, this was a fun game, I think, really good for seeing exactly what white is aiming for any sort of positions we're trying to double the black c pawns and get this nice blockade on c5 in the dark squares like we saw in the game so in any case hope you enjoyed this video if you do want to learn more about how to play these sort of positions as well as how to consistently crush up 1800 with 1e4 then definitely check out the links in the description for the free sample of this course and also the full course respectively i recommend you try out the free sample first see how you like it and then make your own purchasing decision from there. In any case, I will see you guys in the next training. Catch you later.